And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for August 29th. Several systems remain active today. The remnants of Hernan, Tropical Depression Laura about to become a remnant, Izel, a tropical storm, and Maysak in the Western Pacific, which looks like it will become our next typhoon. In the Atlantic, Laura dying off over the central United States um, and four other areas of interest, all with low chances at the moment that were tagging at least. National Hurricane Center is a bit more confident on one of them though, uh, further east in the Atlantic. Day 107 in the Eastern Pacific, Hernan dying off over Baja California Sur. Izel also exists and a 10% area in the Central Pacific. The Western Pacific has Tropical Storm Maysac, which could rapidly intensify over the next few days as it approaches the uh, Ryukyu Islands and a small chance of uh, Eastern Japan as well. No systems active in the Indian Ocean though at this point, it still stays quiet here. So let's take a closer look at Maysac. 65 miles per hour, pressure of 987 millibars is the latest we're going with on this storm. 384 miles east-northeast of Virac on Catanduanes in the Philippines. The storm is not going to affect the islands though. It's going to move north and will end up affecting the Japanese islands. The uh, Ryukyu chain, Okinawa in particular, could be under the gun from this storm. Maybe a Category 4 passage. The storm looks like it will then curve towards the northeast and South Korea will be watching very closely once again on this storm. Here's the wind speed probabilities, a tropical storm force winds there. The oranges start at 50% uh, chance and at the moment that's trending towards South Korea once again, just like the earlier stages of Bavi. The JTWC warning, warning map currently shows this. You can see they're calling for 125 mile an hour peak and they are calling for landfall in South Korea there as well. Um, and that's probably at high end category two or low end category three intensity. There it is 90 knots. So high end category two on that one. North Atlantic looks like this. When you actually look at the systems that are out there, the uh, main development region doesn't look too bad. There's a little area that's uh, in, the, in the middle of it all there, which is looking particularly potent. Another burst of uh, Saharan dust moving off the coast of Africa. The Gulf of Mexico looking fairly quiet in the absence of Laura now at last. Um, but a few, a few thunderstorms blowing up. Eastern Pacific, it's a bit of a mess out there right now. Uh, Hernan was a really messy affair and there's hardly anything left of it now. Is that a little bit more uh, clearly defined, but it's being sheared to death almost. Um, wind shear being blown off the uh, western side of the storm. And Is will probably be peaking around about now with winds of 50 miles per hour. In the east, in the western Pacific, sorry, the uh, Maysac there, you can see it quite clearly, it's got an abundance of cloud tops, very high cloud tops at that, pushing minus 100 degrees Celsius, as you sometimes get in this basin, usually later in the year, admittedly, than what we're currently seeing. Uh, but there it is, and it's looking very good, and it's got a, a good basis to build upon in the next couple of days. The South Pacific looking fairly quiet, a few thunderstorms blowing up though, a whole line really from... Uh, from the eastern part of Indonesia all the way through the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu. The Indian Ocean looking fairly quiet but uh, perhaps a little bit of a land depression there over the central part of India um, and further south you can see a few um, equatorial thunderstorms that aren't doing anything much. Sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific have softened a little bit after those recent tropical cyclones but still warm off the coast of Mexico in particular. Um, in general a little bit cooler than average apart from the warm swathe in the middle. The Atlantic still remains fairly warm even after hurricanes Marco and Laura. Temperatures still above 28 degrees in the Gulf of Mexico, but it has taken the top off those temperatures at least. The uh, Western Atlantic fairly warm as well, 30 degrees plus in some areas. There could, more, there could still be more intense hurricanes this season, particularly in September. The Indian Ocean uh, fairly warm as always, further east is warmer but not much will form anytime soon there. And the Western Pacific once again, you can see the Philippine Sea is the hot point, 30 degrees plus, that's what Maysac's over right now. Uh, the other hot point is in the Gulf of Tonkin and the uh, South China Sea above 30 degrees as well. Bavi's taken a little bit of a toll on those sea surface temperatures but it's still more than warm enough all the way 
up to pretty much to the coast of South Korea. Sea surface temperature anomalies look like this then, um, the uh, La Nina effect still in play there in the uh, equator region of the Pacific, uh, but generally the Western Pacific and the North Atlantic well above average in sea surface temperatures apart from those areas that have been affected by recent storms. Here's some satellite imagery then of uh, MESAC and we're hoping to start up a new satellite feed of this later today on the uh, Force 13 main channel which will uh, show you just live satellite imagery of MESAC and hopefully rapid scan as well as it intensifies and heads towards the Japanese islands. Not too much to see on these images, that's the um, air mass imagery and it's got more about it on the southern side than the uh, northern side so um, you can see there the very harsh gradient perhaps a little bit of shear involved on the northern side of the storm but look at those cloud tops it well into the pinks that's minus 90 and even some yellows which is pushing uh, minus 100 degrees um, and just looking at very good in terms of those high cloud tops probably not going to be delivering much rain to the philippines but it's on its way towards the north now uh, the CTCX wants it to become a Category 5. Uh, I'm not sure whether that will happen. HWIF wants a Category 4. That's more believable. We're running with that. Wind shear will actually start to drop in the next 24 hours. So it's really going to have prime conditions for intensification for the following two days after that. Sea surface temperatures are staying high. And the track forecast there you can see still has a little bit of uncertainty about it with models shifting east. And this is what we're looking at for Izel, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you can see once again the forecast models sticking around the same intensity. Wind shear, as you can see, is rather high. You saw the uh, imagery before, 30 knots or so. It will drop later on, so there could be some more intensification later on down the line. Sea surface temperatures, though, will lose favor, so it will be a very marginal period. Relative humidity looking decent, it will curve towards the north and northwest. On this day, on August 29th, 2005, well, I don't think this really needs any introduction or much explanation, to be honest, but Hurricane Katrina made landfall in Louisiana, uh, catastrophic damage that I'm sure we'll all know about with second nature recall on this one for many decades to come. Talim, though, was also active on this day as a Category 4. That was headed for Taiwan, and Nabi had just become a tropical storm in the western pacific as well katrina became the costliest storm on record at the time and by some estimates is still tied for that right now so the next name on the crazy atlantic hurricane season 2020 is uh, nana followed by omar in the eastern pacific the next name is julio followed by karina in the central pacific the next name on list one is hone in the West Pack, the next name after Maysak is Hai Shen, followed by Newell. 2015 vibes on these, I think. In the North Indian Ocean, the next name on list one is Gatti. In the Southern Hemisphere, we're getting a little bit closer to the start of the season, but still a way to go yet. Imogen is next up in the Australian region, followed by Joshua. The Southwest Indian Ocean kicks off with Alicia, and the South Pacific's next name is Yolanda. That's all for now. Provided that we're not doing any coverage, we'll have another Tropical Weather Bulletin tomorrow night. Check out our new look cyclone tracker on the Force 13 website for the latest up-to-date information. You can also find us, of course, on our YouTube channel, search Force 13, and also on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 at Force 13 on Twitter for the latest updates. You can also help the project become even better by becoming an Ultimate Fan on YouTube. To see the full list of Ultimate Fan benefits and to join, visit youtube.com forward slash force 13 slash join. With a special thanks to our top supporters this month. You can also check out our growing merch store so you can show Force 13's colours wherever you go. You can also find a link to our Discord server underneath this video in the description.